Legendary Passages, Episode 102 Pseudo Apollodorus, The Library, Book 3, Section 15 Kings of Athens This passage recounts the genealogy and history of Theseus, his father Aegeus, his father Pandion II, his father Cecrops, his father Erechtheus, and his father Pandion I. Now Pandion I had many children after Erechtheus, including a son, Median, and a daughter, Orathia. After Erechtheus died, his son Cecrops became king. But his son Pandion II went to Megara, married Pylea, daughter of King Pylus, and had sons, Aegeus, Pallas, Nissus, and Lycus. Meanwhile, Minos took his revenge on the sons of Pandion for the death of his own son. Minos attacked Athens, but the war ended in a stalemate. As tribute, seven youths and maidens were to be sent to the Minotaur's labyrinth, constructed by Daedalus. Finally, Theseus came of age, and after clearing the road of Periphetes the clubman, Sinus the pine vendor, the Cromionian sow, Skyron the Corinthian, Kirkian the wrestler, and Procrustes the stretcher, Theseus arrived at Athens with his father's sword and sandals. Kings of Athens, a legendary passage from J. G. Fraser, translating Pseudo Apollodorus, The Library, Book 3, Sections 15 through Epitome, Section 1. While Orithia was playing by the Elysus River, Boreas carried her off and had intercourse with her. And she bore daughters, Cleopatra and Chion, and winged sons, Zetes and Calais. These sons sailed with Jason and met their end in chasing the harpies. But, according to Acusileus, they were killed by Hercules and Tenos. Cleopatra was married to Phineas, who had by her two sons, Plexippus and Pandion. When he had these sons by Cleopatra, he married Idaea, daughter of Dardanus. She falsely accused her stepsons to Phineas of corrupting her virtue, and Phineas, believing her, blinded them both. But when the Argonauts sailed past with Boreas, they punished him. Chion had connection with Poseidon, and having given birth to Eumolpus, unknown to her father, in order not to be detected, she flung the child into the deep. But Poseidon picked him up and conveyed him to Ethiopia, and gave him to Bethesisime, a daughter of his own, by Amphitrite, to bring up. When he was full grown, Bethesisime's husband gave him to one of his daughters, but he tried to force his wife's sister, and being banished on that account, he went with his son, Ismarus, to Tegrius, king of Thrace, who gave his daughter in marriage to Eumolpus' son. But, being afterwards detected in a plot against Tegrius, he fled to the Eleusinians and made friends with them. Later, on the death of Ismarus, he was sent for by Tegrius and went composed his old feud with him, and succeeded to the kingdom. And war having broken out between the Athenians and the Eleusinians, he was called in by the Eleusinians and fought on their side with a large force of Thracians. When Erechtheus inquired of the oracle how the Athenians might be victorious, the god answered that they would win the war if he would slaughter one of his daughters and when he slaughtered his youngest, the others also slaughtered themselves. For, as some said, they had taken an oath among themselves to perish together. 
In the battle which took place after the slaughter, Erechtheus killed Eumolpus. But Poseidon, having destroyed Erechtheus and his house, Cecrops, the eldest of the sons of Erechtheus, succeeded to the throne. He married Metiadusa, daughter of Eumolpus, and begat Pandion. This Pandion, reigning after Cecrops, was expelled by the sons of Median in a sedition, and going to Pylus at Megara, married his daughter Pylia. And at a later time he was even appointed king of the city, for Pylus slew his father's brother Bias and gave the kingdom to Pandion, while he himself repaired to Peloponnese with a body of people and founded the city of Pylus. While Pandion was at Megara, he had sons born to him, to wit, Aegeus, Pallas, Nissus, and Lycus. But some say that Aegeus was a son of Skyrius, but was passed off by Pandion as his own. After the death of Pandion, his sons marched against Athens, expelled the Metionids, and divided the government in four. But Aegeus had the whole power. His first wife, whom he married, was Meta, daughter of Hoplis, and the second was Chalciope, daughter of Rexenor. As no child was born to him, he feared his brothers, and went to Pythia and consulted the oracle concerning the begetting of children. The god answered him, The bulging mouth of the wineskin, O best of men, Loose not until thou hast reached the height of Athens. Not knowing what to make of the oracle, he set out on his return to Athens. And journeying by way of Trozen, he lodged with Pythias, son of Pelops, who, understanding the oracle, made him drunk and caused him to lie with his daughter Aethra. But in the same night, Poseidon also had connection with her. Now Aegeus charged Aethra that, if she gave birth to a male child, she should rear it, without telling whose it was, and he left a sword and sandals under a certain rock, saying that, when the boy could roll away the rock and take them up, she was then to send him away with them. But he himself came to Athens, and celebrated the games of the Panathenian festival, in which Androgeus, son of Minos, vanquished all comers. Him Aegeus sent against the bull of Marathon, by which he was destroyed. But some say that as he journeyed to Thebes to take part in the games in honor of Laius, he was waylaid and murdered by the jealous competitors. But when the tidings of his death were brought to Minos, as he was sacrificing to the graces in Peros, he threw away the garland from his head and stopped the music of the flute, but nevertheless completed the sacrifice. Hence, down to this day, they sacrificed the graces in Peros without flutes and garlands. But not long afterwards, being master of the sea, he attacked Athens with a fleet and captured Megara, then ruled by King Nessus, son of Pandion. And he slew Megarius, son of Hippomenes, who had come from Onchestus to the help of Nessus. Now Nessus perished through his daughter's treachery, for he had a purple hair in the middle of his head, and an oracle ran that when it was pulled out he should die. And his daughter Scylla fell in love with Minos and pulled out the hair. But when Minos had made himself master of Megara, he tied the damsel by the feet to the stern of the ship and drowned her. When the war lingered on and he could not take Athens, he prayed to Zeus that he might be avenged on the Athenians. And the city, being visited with a famine and a pestilence, the Athenians at first, in obedience to an ancient oracle, slaughtered the daughters of Hyacinth, to wit, Antheus, Aglius, Lyteia, and Oritheia, on the grave of Gerastus the Cyclops. 
Now Hyacinth, the father of the damsels, had come from Lacedaemon and dwelt in Athens. But when this was of no avail, they inquired of the oracle how they should be delivered. And the god answered them that they should give Minos whatever satisfaction he might choose. So they sent to Minos and left it to him to claim satisfaction. And Minos ordered them to send seven youths and the same number of damsels without weapons to be fodder for the Minotaur. Now the Minotaur was confined in a labyrinth in which he who entered could not find his way out, for many a winding turn shut off the secret outward way. The labyrinth was constructed by Daedalus, whose father was Eumolpus, son of Median, and whose mother was Alcipi, for he was an excellent architect and the first inventor of images. He had fled from Athens because he had thrown down from the Acropolis Talos, the son of his sister Perdix, for Talos was his pupil, and Daedalus feared that, with his talents, he might surpass himself, seeing that he had sawed a thin stick with the jawbone of a snake which he had found. But the corpse was discovered. Daedalus was tried in the Areopagus, and being condemned, fled to Minos. And there Pasiphae, having fallen in love with the bull of Poseidon, Daedalus acted as her accomplice by contriving a wooden cow. And he constructed the labyrinth, to which the Athenians every year sent seven youths and as many damsels to be fodder for the Minotaur. Aethra bore to Aegeus a son, Theseus, and when he was grown up, he pushed away the rock and took up the sandals and the sword and hastened on foot to Athens. And he cleared the road, which had been beset by evildoers. For first in Epidaurus he slew Periphetes, son of Hephaestus and Anticlea, who was surnamed the Club Man from the club which he carried. For being crazy on his legs, he carried an iron club, with which he dispatched the passers-by. That club Theseus wrested from him, and continued to carry about. Second, he killed Sinus, son of Polypemon and Cilea, daughter of Corinthus. This Sinus was surnamed the Pine Bender, for, inhabiting the Isthmus of Corinth, he used to force the passers-by to keep bending pine trees, but they were too weak to do so, and being tossed up by the trees, they perished miserably. In that way also, Theseus killed Sinus. Third, he slew at Cromion the sow that was called Phaea, after the old woman who bred it. That sow, some say, was the offspring of Echidna and Typhon. Fourth, he slew Skyron the Corinthian, son of Pelops, or, as some say, of Poseidon. He in the Megarian territory held the rocks called after him Skyronian, and compelled passers-by to wash his feet, and in the act of washing he kicked them into the deep to be the prey of a huge turtle. But Theseus seized him by the feet and threw him into the sea. Fifth, in Elysus he slew Kirkian, son of Brancus, and a nymph Argiope. This Kirkian compelled passers-by to wrestle, and in wrestling killed them. But Theseus lifted him up on high and dashed him to the ground. Sixth, he slew Damastes, who some call Polypemon. He had a dwelling beside the road, and made up two beds, one small and the other big, and offering hospitality to the passers-by, he laid the short men on the big bed and hammered them to make them fit the bed. But the tall men he laid on the little bed and sawed off the portions of the body that projected beyond it. So, having cleared the road, Theseus came to Athens. 
This passage continues into the epitome of Theseus, but our next episode compares Theseus to Romulus and their parallel lives.